Zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP Zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP Zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back. CAP Zapping all you hoes away like CAP Zapping all you hoes away like. Yeah, that was really the only time she spoke to us about it, though, because the camera was rolling. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nights like this I wish that raindrops would fall. Nights like this I wish. I'm going to start saying hi to you guys as you guys come in. Camario, hi. Argentino, you said Michelle, you didn't even say hi to me. Rude. Wilmington boy, 112, hi there. Crystal, I'm here. Yes, class is in session. Y'all come take a seat. This is the Oliver Twist classroom. This is the classroom, honey. Hi, I am underscore a train girl. Oh, you a train girl. Where did you go to school? Samaj Diamond. Hi, that sounds like a drag queen name. My name is Samaj Diamond, hailing all the way. <laughs> and I thank you. Miss Rice underscore hi. Bites Podcast, hi. Mike is awesome. Are you awesome? What makes you so awesome, Mike? Is it your sauce? Is your sauce awesome? Awesome, awesome sauce. Let's see what's going on. Bonjour. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> hi, I'm from Cleveland. What the fuck, Tuck? Now look at that. Look at that. What the fuck, Tuck? All right, y'all come in, in, come on in, come on in, come on in, class from the start. Listen, my name is Oliver Twix. I am your Nort. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? My name is Oliver Twix. I am your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work once again. Y'all say it with me out there. Come on, let's say it together. Y'all say it with me. Come on. Y'all ready? I'm going to count y'all down from 10, 9, and I want emphasis on the what's a God. Y'all ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cutie reporting for what? Duty here to do the Lord's work once again. I am talking to one of the most iconic characters to ever come through America's Next Top Model. When you think about who are some of the staples who have had the most iconic moments, iconic storylines, iconic whatever, whatever, whatever. Michelle is definitely one of those girls and I am so happy to talk to her. Look at it. They, they, they're going crazy. Once again. Yes. Once again. We're talking to Michelle from Cycle 4. And you know, when I was going through the questions in the comment section, I was like, Cycle 4 was traumatic. And I know I say other cycles were traumatic. But just based off the questions I have to ask Michelle today, Cycle 4 was very traumatic. We don't give Cycle 4 a lot of credit. I need for us to start giving Cycle 4 a whole lot more credit. Without further ado, I'm going to bring her on. Do I need to bring it down some? Let me see. Girl, I'm giving spotlight. My Hi! 
How are you? I am so excited. And honestly, I have never done an Instagram live before. So, and none of my kids are here. So sometimes technology and I don't get along. So I'm so happy that this is working right now. <laughs> I really <Yeah>. am. <laughs> Yay. This is so great. You know, <laughs> a lot of girls I'm going live with, that their chat with me has been their first Instagram live. And I'm like, well, I'm glad to be stepping you guys into the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to freaking say you have aged and i say it with the with all due respect you have aged so freaking mm. beautifully like fine wine Maybe definitely the wine gets the better it is right yes <laughs> like you look so just Thank you beautiful 35 believe it or not I just turned 35 in december so that don't <laughs> tell anybody i know right <laughs> don't tell a single soul Listen, I am so grateful that you are doing this with me. It means a lot. And I know, li okay, li okay, let me just be straight up. So usually I post a flyer a day before, but because, yeah. you know, I've been busy and, you know, just trying to get stuff done, I posted it this morning because I knew people would still respond, you know, underneath it. Yeah. But when I opened it, there, the floodgates of heaven, top model heaven had rained down. And I was like, oh my God. I Everybody have, wants to hear a lot from her. So my kids, I'm a teacher, and my kids all day long, I'm face-to-face I'm -face right now, and I keep my phone on in case principal, teacher, someone texts, whatever. My phone is going off all day long, and my kids are like, Miss Carlson, what is wrong with your phone? And I'm like, it's, it's an Instagram thing. And they're like, oh, uh, okay, that's really weird, but whatever. Yeah, and I'm like, no, I, I couldn't tell them. So. Oh, that is <laughs> so, so cute. I don't know. Okay, well, you know what? Thank you, thank you for telling me that. I'll be sure to mince my oh, mouth no, a little bit. They know. Okay, well, good, good, good. Well, fuck shit, goddamn. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I am just so enamored by how beautiful you look, and your eyes are piercing me right now. Thank and then you. just the composition of it all, of your nice skin with the dark hair put against this blue background is like making my color... And the, yeah yeah right <laughs> it has to look good <laughs> well i appreciate I that this interview you know half ass or anything i had to you know we had to make it good um <laughs> what what um what subject do you teach um so i teach fourth grade so i teach everything um oh. so yeah and then the best part is um i started teaching about three years ago mm -hmm. and um the first open house i had these parents coming in and one of the parents came in and went <gasps> Oh my gosh! And I'm like, oh, are you okay? And they're like, Michelle! Oh my gosh! I love you! You're amazing from cycle four! And I'm like, what? Oh my gosh! And their kids are like, what is wrong with you, mom? Like, <laughs> every single year, parents come in and they're like, oh, what did you? Oh my gosh! And the kids all the time are like, why are you freaking out over my teacher? Stop mm -hmm. being ridiculous. You're embarrassing. So yeah. yeah. No, it, I'm... It, <laughs> I've been trying to explain to you girls that you girls are so iconic. Like, you girls are <laughs> iconic. You guys will never age to us. You guys are still that same, <laughs> like, blonde-haired girl who's taking zebra felt Like, you guys are the same. So, I, I mean, I get it. Like, I get yeah. it. I remember when I saw Kenya for the first time. This is years ago when I was, you know, just a little um, jit in college. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Wait so funny to me because to me it feels like it was it was a lifetime ago and I was 18 when we filmed and I'm 35 now so it's been a while um but I love it because sometimes people will walk up and they're like I, I know you from somewhere do you do you work in my dentist office and I'm like mm, no and they're like ah do you, are you like my my brother's cousin or something like, like it's the ran most random things and they're like wait a minute do you shop at the grocery store all the time maybe, I, maybe I've seen you here all the time and in the back of my head I'm like you know, I know exactly where you know me from, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to say it. I'm and then say anything. you know, I was in a store one time, and five minutes later, a lady came, like, running around the corner. She went, oh, I thought you worked at my doctor's office, but you're Michelle. And oh. I'm like, got it. <laughs> Michelle, are you the first Michelle on Top Model? Fans I watching, is Michelle Cycle for the first Michelle from Top Model? I think I was, but then after me, the twins, I think it was Amanda and Michelle. Uh -huh. uh, I was the first Michelle. There have been a couple. 
Yeah, I'm just, I know there have been a couple, but I'm trying to think, were you the first one? Guys, <laughs> they're saying, yes, you were the first Michelle. The first Michelle for Top Model. Okay, listen. Love it. <laughs> listen, guys, I'm ready to start class. I have my phone here, the nice <laughs> black phone that I, guys, I ended up cracking yesterday. That's why I have one of those giant otter boxes on mine, because I, yeah. And it's like, I don't understand what was I thinking, like, why didn't I put a thing on my phone? But it's okay. So, Michelle, these questions that I have put together come from the lovely fans out there. And these are, like, the top questions. So, if you don't like them, be mad at them. Nah, I'm what? I've kind of been peeking all day to see what they've put. So I'm like, oh, that's a good one. Okay, what would I say to that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Well, that's good. Everyone, Cookie's here. <laughs> she picks and chooses when she wants to jump up and say hello. And this is Cookie, well, everybody. I, I just kick my dog out because she came in here and I knew she was going to whine to get back out. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I don't know if you've seen some of my other videos, but Cookie has made so many unannounced cameos and she just, <laughs> she just goes crazy. She just wants some attention, wants to be part of the action. Yeah, it's like, girl, let me have my own. You own the, <laughs> you own this place. I just live here and, and pay the bills. You own it. <laughs> but anyways, let's jump right into it. Why did you audition for America's Next Top Model? So, um, believe it or not, I did not audition. Um, I had been modeling since I was 14, and I had done some work in New York and some work in Canada. And when... I, I, I never heard of Top Model before, ever. Had no idea what it was. Um, so I just graduated high school. Mm -hmm. That week, I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Like, I did not really plan ahead. I just planned till when I graduated. And so I'm like, what do I do? Do I like get a job somewhere? Do I go to college? Do I move to a big city? And I was outside riding my bike, you know, just kind of thinking about life and my phone goes off. And it's like, hey, um, this is a casting person from Top Model. And we have been, you know, looking around, finding, you know, trying to find some people to audition for, you know, sign up for the show and all this. And we really like your look. Um, would you like to, to maybe send us, you know, a packet and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, you know, that sounds, yeah. I'm sitting here trying to figure out, compliment, you know, figure out my life. And I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity. Yeah, so wh when do I need to get it to you? And they're like, yeah, so we need it tomorrow. And here, we're gonna send you, here's all the stuff you need. So this is probably at two o'clock and the FedEx place closed it, I don't know, it was like six or something. So my aunt, my mom and my grandmother, oh, we all joined forces. I was filling out paperwork. Uh, my aunt was taking pictures. I had to film the little, the promo saying, this is who I am, this is my town. So we are running like maniacs all over the town, trying to get all this stuff together. And so I'm filling the application out the like the last page as we're driving to the UPS place. My mother calls and says, hey, you have to get here. They're gonna call the police because I refuse to let them close. Like you have to get here right now. I'm, I'm not, I'm refusing to leave the building. You have to get here. So we're like, oh my gosh. So we probably were, speeding a little bit but we get there and run in and I'm like I'm so sorry we need a box so we're shoving all this stuff in the box and we send it off and my mom's like oh my gosh they were so mad at me so we send this off overnight and a day or two later I get a call and they're like hey would you like to come to semifinals in Los Angeles and I'm like yes absolutely and they're like okay you leave in two days so here's all the stuff you need to bring and I'm like oh my gosh so yeah, it was pretty much a whirlwind from the beginning. So yeah, good times. <laughs> wow. Just listen, for you guys out there watching, just a little aside, I would love when I'm done with my top model um, interviews, if you guys can like put together like different little videos of people talking about their crazy stories, because we've heard some crazy stories. That one is crazy. You guys almost got shackled. He's straight up, yeah, and it's so funny because um, my husband and I talk, we, I feel like I live a very charmed life, um, and things like that, like getting a call from, from someone going, hey, you should try out for Top Model, send me your stuff, like, I never would have done that, I didn't even know what the show was, like, I never would have auditioned if that casting person hasn't been scouring 
you know, the internet looking for, for young models to try to, you know, help out in the industry, try to get on the show. And um, yeah, without that, I, I probably never would have auditioned, so. Wow. Okay, so there's this big <laughs> whirlwind of you trying to get your tape in, and then you get a call, and then you have to hurry up and get there. So you get there, and it's, everybody else is there. It's cameras, it's producers, <laughs> you're meeting Tyra. What do you remember about that? Um, that audition week. So, um, it was casting week. I'm sorry. That, it, it was crazy. Um, I was a small town, Indiana girl. Um, the town I grew up in literally had one stoplight. Um, and that was it. And it was probably three blocks long and, um, corn grew all around it. So I had never really, um, I'd been to like New York, done a little modeling and stuff like that, but I have never really been around a group of, of women like that. And God help me, it was stressful, was so stressful, because they're all, of course, big personalities, mm -hmm. um, one on a reality show, big personalities and stuff. But um, when I, I flew out there, it was so much fun, because I'd never gone on my own before. I'd always gone with a parent or a family member. So this is the first time really stepping out into the world. Um, so that was nerve wracking already. But um, one thing I do remember very vividly, um, uh, like I'd never seen the show before. So I had heard about Mr. and Mrs. J. But <laughs> I didn't know who they were. Keep going. Uh -huh. And for Tyra, I, I knew she was a big model and a big name in the industry, but I didn't know what she looked like. And so I am going out there completely unprepared for life in general. And so definitely. They, yeah, they stick us in this room and they're like, hey guys, we're gonna have, you have paper and come So Mr. and Mrs. J come out and I'm like, oh, okay. Yep, this must be them. All right, yeah, they're awesome. And then all of a sudden through the back door burst this woman and everyone's like, ah, yes! And I'm like, oh, all right, oh, okay, that must be her. They're now in Tyra. Yeah, yeah. So I'm cheering because I don't want to be standing there looking like an idiot. And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. She's amazing. Yeah, my first time ever seeing her was. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just like, blend in, blend in, don't act suspicious, like just kind of cheer with everybody else. But, um, and the thing, like, obviously, I was not very confident back then, but um, I knew during semifinals that I, it's something I wanted very badly. Um, and despite me not knowing what I was getting into and not knowing really what to expect, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna take this shot and I'm gonna run with it mm -hmm. um, because I'm never gonna get this opportunity ever again. And um, I just, the whole thing was just exciting, exciting and stressful oh, and- bad. <laughs> You know what? As you're telling this story, if you don't, you didn't know who anyone is. I can't help but be be reminded of that scene in um, Mean Girls <laughs> yeah. when, like, the Drew Barrymore lookalike girl is like talking, and someone screams, "She doesn't even go here!" Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The whole time, like, and, and it was crazy too because I'd never really been. I didn't have a lot of girlfriends growing mm. up. I, I hung out with the boys. Um, and in high school, I had more guy friends than I had girlfriends and girls mm. were just mama. And so um, when I got there and was thrust in this group of 30 or 40 or however many women, and of course they're all dramatic, they all have crazy personalities. I, I was so focused on the opportunity. I wasn't like, ew, I have to live with these people. So yeah, once it kind of got past that, it, it was a whole new ball game. But um, yeah, I will never, never live with women again. Oh God, yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> Listen, I have a female dog and I'm like, oh. <laughs> My poor husband, so it's me, um, our three daughters and our dog's a girl too, so he's, the poor guys surrounded. Well, look at that. Look <laughs> at that. You never wanted to live with women again, and you got three. Right. And two of them are teens right now, so. Oh, how's that going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, they're alive. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't stop for that. <laughs> so I want to do what the people who watch this love when I do, I'm, and I've called it roll call. I'm going to list every girl who was on your cycle. You're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, whether good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Britta. Britta. Oh, um, <laughs> um, 
Janice says she looked old. Think of a word. She, um, uh, unfortunate is the first word that comes to mind. Because she <laughs> was the first one voted off. And when you're voted off, you can't go home. Um, you actually go home when the filming is, is done completely. Um, so she was the first one voted off. And we were in Los Angeles. She lives in Los Angeles. So she had to be in top model quarantine for like two months in her, in her town. So she couldn't go back to her apartment, nothing. So she was stuck in the town she lived in and for two months couldn't like, was on lockdown. So unfortunate, yes. How was that first photo shoot for you? Did you at least know Nigel? Um, I, I, I knew Nigel, okay, of, of his photography and stuff like that. So I knew him. Um, and funny thing about Nigel too, all the girls were like, oh, Nigel, oh my gosh, hey. His wife did his makeup and touch-ups and stuff. So his wife was constantly on set. So we never stood a chance. You know, I just interviewed Nigel yesterday and it was, it was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was so amazing. And Nigel, you know, Nigel is a good looking man, but. It still is, yeah. Can I tell you guys a secret? Yes. You know, even growing up, I mean, I wouldn't be wetting my drawers over Nigel Barker. <laughs> I'm just, is he a good looking man? Yes. And maybe, you know, that's probably just not my aesthetic of the things that I want to sink my teeth into. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, girl, why are these girls just so swooned over Nigel Barker? I mean, you know what? Maybe it's the bald head. Because I am, I do have a thing for a nice, a nice, shiny, sparkling head. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get off that. Let me get off that. Let me go. <laughs> Who's next? Sarah. Sarah. Oh. Um, she's very, uh, very plain. Um, I feel like she, I mean, she was a good person, but she, to me, had a very plain personality. Mm -hmm. um, and that, yeah. Yeah, but she, she was a very sweet girl. I mean, yeah, but, but that's really the word I would use to describe her. Gotcha. Oh, Brandy. Mm. Uh, yeah, bitchy. Bitchy's a good word. Yeah. Was and she was, really that bad? Well, the thing is, in semifinals, she was amazing. She was happy and sweet and very, like, positive. And then when she got there for the show, I don't know what happened. Um, it was, like, kind of a different person showed up, um, which was unfortunate because it was kind of shocking, too, because she was so pleasant and great to talk to and hang out with during the semifinal week that, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, just a, she just had a bad attitude all the way around. Um, and I feel like if that wasn't the case, she would have made it so much further. Um, but her attitude was just, I honestly, it was like somebody flipped a switch. Dang it. I you know. know, she, her photos were great too. Yeah, they were amazing. But, um, like I've told my sister is lives in New York now and um, is very is into modeling and, and trying to get signed mm -hmm. and stuff. But I, the one thing I, I pushed on her, I'm like, hey, I don't care who you are. If you have a bad attitude, they won't want to work with you. No. Um, yeah. Mm -mm. So I think that was the major uh, major issue she was having. Thank you. I will say, um, but there's a moment when you guys are doing that tennis challenge. Uh-oh, Tyra, we bind you. Tyra, we <laughs> bind you. We bind you, Tyra, from doing harm. Harm to yourself, harm to others, and harm to our Wi-Fi. Tyra, we bind you from doing harm. Harm to yourself, harm to others, and harm to our Wi-Fi. Oh, she's back. There you go. <laughs> yeah, she's back. But no, I remember when um, there was a scene of Brandy upstairs in a room. Who was she going off on again? I can't remember. It was Tatiana. Um, wait, <laughs> uh, Brandy walked in the room, like, like, just ready, ready to fight somebody. Like, she was just in a bad mood, just going off about the photographer, going off about the outfit. I mean, very much like at the makeover, just nothing was right and nothing was, is going to make her happy. And then I think Tatiana just said something like, ah, Brandy, stop here, you know, oh my gosh, stop complaining. Just a comment. She went off and um it was it sucked too because we couldn't leave the room 
um, when they say, hey, photo shoot's done, you guys have to go in here. We were literally stuck in that room with them arguing. We couldn't go anywhere. And it just, mm -hmm. it was, yeah. And I'm not a person that likes drama. So just, gotcha. yeah. No, oh, my kid. What about Noel? Noel. Oh my. I'll say two words. My son. <laughs> my baby. Mm -hmm. She loved her baby. Um, nosy would also be a very good adverb. Like when she, she, she was very into. Um, how do I like when she wrote the whole letter? like addressing the house and maybe nosy wouldn't be maybe like maybe attention is kind of what I feel like she enjoyed attention which is not really a bad thing um but she you know wrote the letter and got gathered all the girls into the kitchen at one point was like I have this letter I would like to read to everyone I just want to thank you all for being part of this opportunity and and it was very like fluff like feeling emotion and I'm just like oh like this is oh my gosh and then she ended up coming back. I left the room and I'm like, okay, that's great. It's mushy. And that, the, all the girls are like, let's hug and have a <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I'm just like, ew, gross, please go away. <laughs> back to my room. And then she followed me and was like, hey, I noticed you had a different response from everyone else. And I just, you didn't come up and talk to me after I read it. And I just, I, I so I just wanted to see if you were okay. And I'm just like, I just, it's, I don't want to be part of the hug fest. Stop mm -hmm. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're funny. Very sweet, too. And um, honestly, like, I understand the whole, my son, my son, I miss my baby. Um, because I did WWE Tough Enough, and my daughter was, I think, two and a half at the time. And I left that show to go back home um, because I miss my baby. So I know exactly where she was coming from. At that point, I was, like, 18 and over it, didn't get mm -hmm. it. I totally understand now. Gotcha. I'm going to ask you about <laughs> WWE a little bit later. I just want to give a shout out to this person. It's I'm not, LOL. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I'm not DF1. Yes, ma'am. But they, they, they put in the chat the quote that Brandy said that I was trying to say, but my memory couldn't get it. Um, but I just love moments of like when I just, I know that girl. And Br when Brandy was in that room, she said to Tom, she said, it, uh, Tom, she said, if we didn't kick off for fighting, your, if we didn't get kicked off for fighting your ass, for fighting, your ass would be taught right now. I said, yes, Brandy, get her. You yes. know you're not supposed to be that mean, but get her. Your ass would be taught right now. She uh, meant that. She, Brandy, yeah. I just want everybody to know Brandy meant that. Yeah, and then she, I think someone got into, I was, I think Brandy got into an argument with, um, Tiffany at the um, the horoscope um, photo shoot, maybe. Someone got into some argument there with Tiffany, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure Brandy or something. Just bad attitudes all around, but yeah, she, Yo was, she wasn't playing. She wasn't playing. No. Yo ass would be towed up. <laughs> yeah, and at that point, I'm like, I'm going to scoot a little further. Yes, because whoever was in her, was whoever was in her radar, baby, yep. please get that. I'm sorry, y'all. We in here cleaning and doing a bunch of things. <laughs> the daddy, the daddy, y'all. Thank you, baby. Um, where was I? Luvi. You, I love Uvi. She's so sweet. Honestly, mm -hmm. sweet would be the word for her because she just has like a very sweet soul. She's a very sweet person. Um, I I love her so much. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I follow her on Instagram and we comment and stuff all the time. But yeah, she um yeah, she's just she's still very much just a sweet, amazing person. Yes. Okay. Tiffany Richardson. Uh Tiffany. Um hmm, um Tiffany, um, a word to describe her. Um mm, or a couple. Yeah, on I think She's sweet and tough. Um, she definitely had a wall built up. Um, and yeah, she she wanted to be in that competition and um, wanted to be a model and, and kind of take that road. And she was very tough because she had lived, uh, she had had a, a very rough time in, in life. And um, yeah, and I, I honestly, I wanted her to succeed out of everyone. Um, I, I, I wanted her to make it the furthest, honestly. 
Mm. Do you know her secret Instagram account? No, I have searched for her everywhere. I cannot find her. I know she did some work in Miami and did some music videos and some modeling and stuff like that. But um, that was probably two years after that season. And I have had no contact with her then. I would love to make, make contact. Contact with her again. Guys out there, listen. You guys can find Tiffany for us. We would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Rebecca. Oh, poor Rebecca. Rebecca. Um, oh, goodness. She's a, a, a good old sweet country girl. Um, little small town girl. Yup. She, um, um, gosh, words to describe her. She was very, um, my goodness. I don't, I want to say plain, but not in a bad way. She, you know, um, was, you know, the blonde, short hair. She was very, um, and then I think like the photo shoot spiced her up a little bit. Um, but yeah, she was, she was a very sweet person too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked her a whole lot. Um, and it's funny because in our apartment, there were all these mannequins around, um, just kind of like the body part of it. And it had clothing all over it. And um, there was this one gorgeous white dress. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca was actually engaged and she was going to get married. And so she asked, she's like, hey, can I, can I take that dress and maybe like use it in my wedding or something? So she ended up taking that dress and then I, all of us followed suit and all the mannequins had no clothes on them. <laughs> I know that's right. We're going to leave with something, <laughs> God damn it. So yeah, yeah, she, she's a very sweet person. I like her. Tatiana. Tatiana, um, gorgeous. I have always thought Tatiana was absolutely beautiful and she's still, mm -hmm. her eyes are gorgeous. Her hair is long and beautiful. Like, yeah, I, I have always thought she's gorgeous. Christina. <laughs> Christina. Um, she was very, um, I see, I feel like I keep saying like bad words or negative words. She's, she was very rigid. And like, like I said, that wasn't really a bad thing, but she was very like, this is how it is. And this is how I'm going to do things. And, and this is what I believe in. And this is, this is me. So, so deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. And then also too, she, um, I remember the night she was eliminated. I knew someone was going to be eliminated because I'd been eliminated before. And like I said, they kept us around. So they had come into my room and made sure that the other bed was ready in the hotel. And um, so I'm like, Ooh, someone's going to get eliminated tonight. Okay. And the legal drinking age is 18 in South Africa. So I may have been drinking these little bottles of champagne that I found. So she comes in at like two o'clock in the morning, like tears coming down her face. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry you got eliminated without <laughs> a friend. And she's like, are you, are you okay? And I'm like, I have been drinking champagne here. Would you like some? I'm so sorry you got eliminated. And she's like, oh, oh. Okay, all right. Where was this on the show? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. She was, uh, it, it was fun to hang out with her afterwards. <laughs> you know, Christina has a permanent place in my top model brain and no, like I my relics because I always remember her due to Tyra telling her the little secret on how to make your lip more plump. And I remember staying, standing in the mirror as a little queen trying to. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and you know what I, 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 another thing that Tyra told the girls not on Top Model but it was on an episode I would never forget this it was on an episode of the Tyra Bang show with Kamora Lee Simmons and Tyra told them that a, 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 um, a nice dessert to eat if, you, if you're on a diet but you still want to feel like you're eating dessert is to eat whipped cream yeah oh mm -hmm. yeah yeah a little whipped cream goes a long way huh? yes <laughs> and listen, when I had to cut weight last year, and I, I remember Tyra saying the whipped cream thing, I was like, let me look on the, on the back of whipped cream. There's nothing in it. Yeah. It's just a cloud little fluff. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, I was Mr. Whip It because I was just <laughs> eating it all, all the time. Shout out to Tyra. She's good for. Mm -mm. Yeah, little, little tips and hints. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about Brittany? Brittany, loud, loud. And that's just. Her personality is loud. Her voice mm -hmm. is loud. She's just, um, 
in general, just a very big, loud personality. And that's not a bad thing. Um, mm -hmm. It still is. Um, I love um, looking at her like Instagram story and stuff like that. She is the same person mm -hmm. and I love it. She's not going to change for anybody. That's who she is. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, loud. <laughs> <laughs> what about Kinga Hill? Hmm. Kini and I, like, I think on the show, we didn't have much love for one another. So I think that may probably still be the case. I don't know. I haven't really talking to her or just spoken to her really since the show. So yeah, there's, I don't think there's a lot of love, love there. <laughs> well, I've spoken I, to her. Yeah. I've spoken to her. She seems very nice. Maybe she like slide her DMs. You're right. The thing is, I never really thought like, felt like she liked me like ever. Oh. So maybe it could be a little bad taste in my mouth from that, but I, I mean, it was seventeen years ago. You but know? Um, I, well, one word I could use to describe her: focused. Um, she was very focused. She was going to be a model, and she was going to do it, and she was going to succeed, and she was going to do it whether she was going to do it through top model or whether she was going to do it on her own. Um, so that was a, a, a good quality that she had. I mean, she was there to to get it and, and go as far as she possibly could. I didn't get a chance to finish my Kenya interview, but I don't know if I told her this or not, but one of my another like visual favorite moments of Top Model is watching Kenya dance in Africa. I don't know if you, I think you, I think you, maybe you were eliminated by then. At that point, yeah. Um, yeah, this is Top Four. But when she had that, they had gave her that long ponytail and she had that little pink thing around her and Miss Kenya was twirling and posing. I said, yes, bitch, you better work. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, she definitely like focused. That's absolutely. She was there to, to give it her all in the photo shoots and to do her best. And and yeah, she mm -hmm. she definitely knew what she wanted. Mm -hmm. Kaylin, amazing. Like I just think she's all around amazing. Um, she was amazing on the show. Um, and she. She's still amazing till this day. So yeah, she, I think she's, her and Yuvi, I would have to say, are like my favorites from the show. Just because they are just genuine people and just, hey, this is what you get. This is me. And they just seem very down to earth and just, just awesome. Like, I feel like if all three of us were together at this point, we could, I mean, just sit and talk and hang out and it wouldn't be crazy or weird or anything like that so yeah it'd be fun to hang out with us too what about naima the winner of cycle four the um i remember the first time i saw her i'm just like damn <laughs> she um is edgy and um there's lots of worship i mean she's very edgy especially with the hair and her features and just um and she also was was very focused. I mean, she went in there and she gave it her best and she, I mean, knocked it out of the park. She was amazing. Gotcha. Okay. Well, <laughs> roll call is done. You did a good job. Thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs> so K-pop Danny wants to know, ask her if the bleaching process for her makeover was really that intense for her to cry and stuff like that. A lot so, of questions about your makeover. My makeover. So, I had never dyed my hair before. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, blonde, that'll be so much fun. That'll be amazing. Great. So I didn't really know how it was supposed to feel. Um, and they said that it would, you know, irritate a little bit and stuff like that. But it literally, like, felt, I'd never been in that much pain before. Um, it felt like my scalp was melting. It was horrible. Um, and then the next day at the or maybe a day or two later at the photo shoot the my hair it was my scalp was tight and just oh my hair was brittle and the person was doing my hair and he looked down he went oh, honey oh my god oh oh my god and i went what and he's like you have blisters and open sores on your scalp like you have chemical burn on your scalp from your makeover and I'm like, are you kidding? And that's probably honestly how I got impetigo on my face because I had open sores on my scalp and they were using all this product and makeup. And so my skin was already freaking out. You just couldn't see it 
because my hair covered it. Um, but yeah, legit had chemical burn on my scalp from that makeover. Horrible. Now, whose fault was it? Was it yours or someone else's? So they took me from this to like that ice blonde in four hours. Oh, no. No, that's like, that's a process. And I think because, you know, they're like, hey, we're here. We're starting the makeovers. You guys have till this time to finish <laughs> everything. <laughs> Our hairstyle is like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So he was trying to meet this deadline. And yeah, it was. It was Look, yeah. Michelle, I'm, excuse my friends. They didn't give a fuck about you. They lifted, oh. they was lifting you, girl. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Baby. Yeah. My boyfriend knows her. Baby, her hair right now is like a, it's, let's just say black. Yeah. She said they lifted her from black to icy blonde in four hours. Oh, she was doomed from the beginning. Doomed. She yeah. was doomed. She said she had blisters and open sore. Oh, she was doomed. Yeah. It was, it was horrific. Yeah. And it, and then they never touched up my hair either, which really irritated me. Never. So these super dark roots. But after I got voted out in South Africa, I'm like, Hey, I want to get my hair touched up, you know? And I was like, Oh my gosh, is it going to hurt again? It's going to be horrible. It was the gentlest process I have ever. And it was like, my hair felt amazing afterwards. It didn't burn at all. Like she did an incredible job, but I'm just like, Oh, Maybe that's how it was supposed to be the first time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I got I gotta throw a little mess in there. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> so the girl I'm watching the girls in the chat right now. And the girls in the chat are saying that Mr. J said it it you have the experience you have because you washed your hair the night before. What? I honestly I don't remember if I washed my hair the night before. I have no idea. But um I I don't I don't think that that was the problem. The problem was the the chemicals they were using and the amount of time that they did it. Like maybe it was the hair washing, um, but I had touched it up after that multiple times and actually kept the blonde for a while, never had that issue again. So I don't know if it was hair washing was the issue or not, but yeah, I, sh I just know it was it was horrific. Never again. <laughs> Four hours. No, and, and the only reason why I jumped like that is because this gray piece of my hair, this is this is yeah. a this is a clip in um, yeah. for those of you guys that don't know. But I bef before I used to actually dye my hair gray. And what they would have to do is they would have to take my black hair to that icy bond and then they would have to tone it and then they would put the color in. And this is this is 2015. So it's, you know, Olaplex and all the grand stuff. But I yeah. remember the first time I got my my hair dyed, I was like, what the fuck are y'all doing to me? I just felt heat. And I was like, hey, wait, they was like, no, it's the chemicals. So if they did. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole time I'm like, it, it's burning. Is it? Is it? It's, and they're like, oh, no, no, you just you just never had it done before. It's supposed to irritate. And I'm like, oh, OK, this is normal. I had no idea. No idea. Well, it's yeah. good to see that you have many long tresses in 2021. Exactly. I want to grow it out longer. I've been taking collagen pills. We're working on it. Yes. <laughs> Is that what makes your hair grow? On it, yeah. I take collagen um, every single day. It helps my nails are strong and gorgeous because of it. And then my hair is nice and shiny and healthy. And Oh, yeah. Mm. Collagen Thank every you for that. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me clearly? Yup. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So Jive Turkey wants to know, ask how the incident was when they scared her with the shelves. Was there something we did not see? And this is a, and I, this involves Miss Kenya because she was the one, I believe, who closed uh -huh. the thing on you. Yeah. So I don't like, like tight spaces don't bother me. But like if I'm in a tight space and there's stuff that moves, like, I feel like I could be, like, squished or crushed or something. And it's just, like, a weird Ooh. feeling. Yeah. And, and it's, it's I, just, I just don't like it. And so I even said, I'm like, guys, please don't don't move these, like, for real. I Just please don't move them. I want to walk in with some shoes. And as soon as she did, you know, like, what's, what's from the uh, Indiana Jones? Or no, what is Star Wars when they're in the trash compactor and the, the walls are coming in ready to crush them? No. That's not cool. Like, uh-uh. 
yeah, it was just, yeah, it's a weird phobia thing, I guess. So, yeah. Did yeah. you have a panic attack? That I, I guess it, it sort of kind of was a panic attack. I've never really had one beyond that. But yeah, it was just like, oh my gosh, they're moving. And I think I didn't really expect it either. So it caught me off guard. So yeah, then I'm like, I just, I need a freaking moment. I need a moment. And then I'm like, who would do that? Like, come on guys. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that we... <laughs> So, okay, Michelle, so let, let me ask you this question, just for technical. Yeah. Are you talking to me on an iPhone? Yes. Okay, do you have headphones? I do. Do sure. you know what? Mm -hmm. Because I think because I have on headphones, every time you talk, it's cutting it's cutting you out, and I don't want to. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. I'll just sing songs so you get back. <laughs> oh, Michelle, I got a booty? Where are all these top of the girls coming with all this booty? I ain't see that. We ain't see none of that on the show. But uh, oh, so you get the full figure. Yes, I'm just like, <laughs> girl, you look. Hey, thirty five. What? Right. Well, I run like a lot, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that helps quite a bit. Let's see. Get my life figured out here. No, you're totally fine. <laughs> it's just you and I. Ain't nobody watching. There we go. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. I I can hear my husband's phone in the other room. He's listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just heard your voice and I'm like, where's that coming from? It's my husband. He's, He's watching. Watching he is. <laughs> is hey. that better? Hey, how are you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my next question that I have for you is from L. Edwards, and mm -hmm. they want to know, like me, what are your thoughts on the Got Milk photo shoot? Highly controversial <laughs> many years later. So um, during that photo shoot, I didn't really think about, you know, the whole the drama now. They're like, oh, it was a black place photo shoot. And I'm like, I, like, we didn't really think about it back then. And then the first article I saw about it, I'm like, <gasps> Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that probably wasn't a good idea. Um, yeah, because I think it was um, Brittany that had to do the, the African. Uh, no, it was Noelle that had to do the African. Um, and I think Noelle is mixed. So she's part black, um, part white or something else. Um, mm -hmm. And then Brittany is straight going from from a white girl to to I think she had the Afro and everything. So I think Tatiana back, too was another one. Was she? And I, I looking back so. now, yeah, I'm like, oh, oh man, that's. And then I started thinking about the rest of the season. I'm like, oh no, what else did we do on that season? Yeah, it probably wasn't the greatest idea. Um, I think they were. I think the idea behind it was to kind of change what we looked like and see how we represented that in the photo. And it probably could have been done in a better way. But um, the representing the different ethnicities, um, I guess, was what they settled on. So, oops. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> listen, I'm a, I've always given, you know, the show the benefit of the doubt. And something yeah. just pop, popped in my brain just now. I remember on, like, talk shows and other TV shows, it was, it was kind of like the end thing at the time in television yeah. for people to, like... Um, transform their face or like yeah, you know, go undercover around. yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it was like an end thing and so yeah. I personally don't believe that the show would do that knowing it would offend anybody I really yeah. do believe they probably thought they were reverencing and respecting and making yeah you yeah know, and I just it... thought that too yeah like mm -hmm. representing the ethnicities in a very positive way um and trying to make it beautiful and artistic mm -hmm. and, and unique so I it wasn't done in um you know a negative way trying to to mock any ethnicity or something yeah, like that it, so. it was it was to make a gorgeous photo and and to kind of test us to see what we did when we were looked completely different mm -hmm. um and so it was done in a very respectful way and I think I was a Eskimo um and honestly, that shoot came in a really good week because I had impetigo all over my face and it covered it up quite beautifully. So, 
Yikes. So, <laughs> elevator, but we know better and we are all doing better. Yes. We know better. Yes. <laughs> um, for you guys watching, um, Jen on from Cycle 13, I did, a, I did a joint chat with Jen, Laura, and Sunday, and I believe Jen broke it down the best on mm-hmm. why those types of things are not acceptable. So, yep. if you guys want to know like a detailed thing about it, um, go watch that video with the Cycle 13 girls because she broke it down so great. Mm-hmm. Um, Elevator wants to know, was she forced to out herself? So I remember watching, and I <laughs> forgot this, but then I remember looking at the comments that you came out on the show as bisexual. I did. What was that for you? And to answer their question, were, were you motivated by the producers to spill that information about yourself? Um, I was not. Um, honestly, okay. um, our season had so much drama that um, they didn't really need to to try to get us to really do anything. But um, I, I think in high school, I had a girlfriend. Um, so before the show, um, I had a, a, a girlfriend. Hey, Sarah, if you're out there. Um, oh. And so we actually, <laughs> we actually um, broke up before I graduated high school. And so I kind of knew that about myself already, but um, it's not something that was really out there. And I think one of the reasons I broke up with her is because I wasn't ready to be out there like that. Um, And it scared me a lot. I remember one of the reasons I broke up with her is because she, um, she wrote our names on her notebook and it's like Sarah Hart Michelle. And I'm like, ah, don't do that. And so I wasn't ready to take that step yet. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think on top model, once I got kind of out there in the world and, and saw all these different people and saw that it was, um, that I wasn't the only person that was kind of having that struggle. And um, I think in the house, eventually it, um, it came to a point where like, you know, I'm kind of, kind of ready to talk about this and ready to, to just get it out there. Um, And my poor parents, they, (laughs) so I didn't tell them anything about the show. And so of course, all the previews the week before that episode happened, they're like, um, they're like, Oh my gosh, Michelle, are you okay? Because all the previews were me like crying and they're like, a model's gonna reveal a dark secret. And they're like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? And so that episode aired and I remember we had so many people at our house. We had my sisters, their friends, like all these people. And so I'm sitting there crying on the TV and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's coming. Oh my gosh. And so it... I said it and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gay. I'm bisexual, you know, and the whole house was silent. And then from the basement, you hear all these little footsteps just running through the basement and then running up the stairs. And my little sister, I can't remember how old she was. They're probably like 11, 10, 11, something like that. So she runs in the room and she's like, Michelle, Michelle, what does bisexual mean? And I'm like, (laughs) um, you need to ask mom. And my mom's like, ha huh, Michelle. <laughs> so yeah, it was, um, and it, it was all fine. They, they love me. It's no big deal at this point, but, um, yeah, it was just like, huh. All right, cool. And then my aunt, of course, she's like, how did you guys not know? I mean, she wore like, like a, uh, a bracelet, a rainbow bracelet for you three years in high school, like every day. Like, how did you not understand that was uh-huh. what was going to happen? But yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was a little shocked for him, but yeah. <laughs> There's always that one family member. That's like, yeah, I don't know why like all y'all trash. are gagging. I've been doing this. Why are y'all gagging? I knew this already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of questions wanted to know, and if you care to share, you don't have to. Um, are, what, what, how do you identify in 2021? Um, so I, I, I mean, I'm bisexual. Um, I happen to marry um, the love of my life, who happens to be a man. Um, and honestly, um, it's for me it wasn't really the like a male or female that I was kind of looking to fall in love with it was it was someone that I was my soulmate mm-hmm. and um Bob is absolutely he absolutely is my soulmate yeah and um one thing too a lot of my relationships were just men and women were not healthy relationships um they were emotionally unhealthy. They were um, mentally unhealthy. Um, unhealthy. Um, I was not treated well in a lot of them. And um, so when 
I met Bobby, he was, you know, he is the best relationship I've ever had. So it just happened to be the one. <laughs> oh, and I see he's a doctor. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he has a doctorate in um, psychology. So yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he's very smart, very cute. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you say he's cute. Oh yeah. So we're watching the show, um, The Last Kingdom, and it's all about Vikings. So I got, I convinced him to grow his beard out and he has it shaved on the sides and some hair on top. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, lo oh, it looks real good. I'm just going to go be nosy. <laughs> Give me one second. Bobby, post a cute picture. <laughs> I'm just going to go be nosy. You know, I'm not going to show, I'm not going to yeah. show these thirsty bots because they don't know <laughs> Um, so it's funny, um, believe it or not, there's a 16 year age difference between Bobby and I, um, and you never would guess. Um, Who's yeah, older? so, so Bobby's 51. And I'm 35. And um, yeah, and honestly, it's, we, we are perfect together. And uh, the age difference really doesn't, doesn't really it come into play. Matter. But, but mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> girl, you're getting, you're getting flustered just talking about it. I now am. Paging Dr. Bobby. Now praising <laughs> Dr. Bobby. Dr. Bobby. Bobby, come in Dr. here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's going to see it and walk in here in a second. <laughs> Is he really? <laughs> Is he really Bobby, come here. Bobby, the girls want to see you. The girls and squirrels. I'm, I'm going to tell him to come here. Yes, come here, Bobby, right fast. Come here, Bobby. Bobby, come here. Where are you? <laughs> He's not coming. coming. He's coming. Ta-da. You got to get down lower. This is my husband. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I can't hear anything, of course. No. Oh, I'm not saying a word. I'm a <laughs> He's not saying anything. I'm married. Looking. I can't He's say nothing. <laughs> I'm married. I let them say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I can't. I can't even. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love to see love and you look so happy and yeah. like he just he, he oh, oh. <laughs> yeah we've been together for um uh, for quite a while so yeah mm -hmm. it's um yeah it gets better every day <laughs> oh yes that's what Christina Aguilera said it keeps getting better yes it does <laughs> Ooh. okay so we're yeah, back, to... back, back to the topic at hand. <laughs> yes, right. So, Janae, I'm like, girl, where am I? So, Janae M wants to know, how does she feel seeing the girls freaking out about her skin condition on TV? <laughs> also, was, I, want, I want to ask that part just yet. So, let's yeah. talk about the skin fiasco that shook the top model house. Yeah, so most of that drama, I had no idea it happened until I watched the episode. Damn no clue like the whole noelle calling her mom and like oh my gosh you're all gonna die and <laughs> all this stuff going on um i i saw none of it i was asleep during that time um and a lot of the drama um took place on elimination days because those days we were stuck in our house literally all day long and the elimination room was um a room off of our loft so we never left our loft area that day so that's the day where everyone got bored and all the drama started so that day um they i guess decided that i was a witch and had some what bones hidden somewhere and that i was melt hurting myself or something flesh-eating bacteria huh um <laughs> but yeah it was i had no idea no idea like i knew they were concerned about it because they're like hey your face is like getting worse and i'm like i know oh my gosh and um, we actually had a phone in our loft that we called the bat phone and you could call down to the producers and stuff. And I called and I'm like, Hey, I, I, I need to go see somebody like my face is getting worse. This is a modeling competition. Like, Oh my gosh, like I have to get this fixed. And they're like, Oh, okay, well we can get you an appointment in like a week. And I'm like, Oh my, that's like two more photo shoots. Like uh, that's no, like <laughs> I need something sooner. And um, it wasn't until I went to the photo shoot for the Got Milk um, ads that the, um, I was talking to one of the, the hair guys 
And he's like, no, 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 honey, you need to, you need to go right now. And so he went over and talked to some of the producers and stuff. And they're like, no, he, she has to go. It's getting work. And he did makeup with us like every, every week. And, um, you know, they, she has to go right now, like to somewhere like 30 minutes later, they're like, Hey, Michelle, get in the car. We're going to take you someplace. This is the day after they told me they couldn't get me an appointment for a week. So I'm like, come on guys, really? Like, that's not cool. But then um, ended up being in Patigo and I guess kids get it all the time and it's just some little bacteria thing you can get in your skin. And of course, from the chemical burn on my scalp and all the products and all that stuff, my skin was already freaking out. So yeah, good times. <laughs> the real Sarah of the story is Tiffany's grandmother who told y'all asses, go read a book. <laughs> Someone, someone Tiffany's grandmother was amazing. She's just like, you guys are ridiculous. Like so, <laughs> that was great. Yeah, her grandma's just like common sense. Like you guys are idiots. You're dramatic. Like uh -huh. get over it and move on. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. go yeah. read a book. Yes, y'all bought in that house. Go read a book. Lewis, they wouldn't let us have books. We couldn't have anything in that house just to interact. <laughs> Tyra, we bind you. Listen, girl, don't come over here starting all this trouble on my thing now. We've been cool, Tyra. We've been cool. Don't come messing it up. It's a running joke. Every time there's a technical difficulty, you're saying that it's Tyra doing it. I mean, even though we know it's I not, like but it. it's, it's just a little funny thing. It's a funny thing I, I did. I don't know, guys, which video was that when, like, the internet connection was bad. It was bad. And I had just watched The Craft. No, yeah, The Craft, but the new version. But I'm a, I'm yes. a, I'm a 90s, 80s, 70s girl all day. Yes. And so I was just like, Tyra, we bind you, girl. We bind you from doing harm. And it has, it's just, it's, it's stuck throughout all of the chats. And I see them every time. They're like, we bind you, we bind you. I was like, okay, whatever, okay. Perfect. I'll go along with it, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about the episode. This is Hazel Heart 385. The episode when Rebecca fainted, how long was production actually down? Um, production was down for, um, oh my gosh, it, it was a while. Um, and the thing that sucked about those eliminations, they started at like seven o'clock at night. So sometimes we'd be there till like two, three o'clock in the morning. And mm -hmm. I think that was one of the longer ones. Um, but production stopped completely, of course. And they you know, got her help and went and took her to the hospital and got her checked out. And we had to just wait. They, um, we left the elimination room. We went back to, um, um, into the loft and we just had to sit there for hours and hours and hours. And then, you know, I mean, pretty much until her hospital visit was done, and then they brought her back, sat her in a chair, and then we went in there and continued. But it was probably two, three o'clock in the morning um, until we were done with that one. Yeah, it was, yeah. I, th I think it was so long. They actually fed us again because we ate dinner before we went to the elimination. And then they actually ordered us food again later that night because we, we were so hungry that, and we couldn't go to bed. So yeah, yeah, it was a mess. What were your thoughts when you saw her hit the ground? Um, it was, it was loud. Um, and honestly, her weave saved her, um, because she had a, a whole weave put in there in the back. So she had padding. Um, so if she didn't have okay. her weave in her head, it would have been even worse. Um, but I mean, it was shocking because it's, it's so stressful in those situations anyway. And, um, what you don't see is all the lights on the ceiling and all the lights on the side. And sometimes it gets so hot in that room and the lights shining on you for um, sometimes an hour or two at a time. And it's just, it's miserable sometimes. So when she was standing there, she was trying to adjust and was moving her leg back because she kind of felt she didn't feel good. Um, and then she went straight as a board. I've never seen anybody fall like that, literally straight as a board and just fell straight back. And it was like, it was in slow-mo. It happened so quick, but it was like, it was in slow motion almost. And then when she hit, it was like someone slamming a door. Like it was so loud and everyone stood there in shock for a second. I mean, producers, Tyra, everyone, it was like probably three or four seconds where everyone's like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And then just everybody ran in to help her. Um, but it was, and we're just like, 
what happened? Oh my gosh. And we really thought it was just maybe the lights that had gotten to her. But um, yeah, the sound of her head hitting the floor, like, yeah, I think that's what, what got us the most. But thank God for weaves. So I was just about to say, this is the first time in top model history I've ever heard that a weave actually saved a girl. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, I unbelievable. Yeah, because she had gotten, <laughs> yeah, because she had that plain Jane blonde hair, and they put that weave. I mean, they pumped her hair up a lot. She had a lot in there. So, yeah, it saved her. She would have probably had a concussion otherwise. Plot twist. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. Winter C is asking, we could, okay, wait, before I move forward. Yeah. Okay, so I want to know, where was Tyra really when all of this happened? Because we see a moment when she comes up, she's like, were you guys scared? But was Tyra like, tell me what, tell me what, tell me what, what the mother was doing when, when her beautiful model contestant hit the ground. So Tyra was actually up at the front of the judging room or whatever. And the producers ran to Rebecca and Tyra came around the side and was actually checking on her too. Cause they, I mean, it really scared everybody. Um, and then she kind of got out of the way and, and everyone got Rebecca up and, and paramedics and all that stuff. Um, and then she kind of went away for a little bit and then came back and like when the camera was on and said, Oh, Hey guys, Oh my gosh, did that scare you? Okay. But that was, that was kind of, it because there were so many other people really taking care of Rebecca at that point that that she wasn't really needed but um but yeah that was really the only time she spoke to us about it though because the camera was rolling so mm -hmm. <laughs> um so winter she wants to know we collectively want to know the whole story of Tiffany's elimination oh my gosh so um Tiffany is a very sweet person but very tough as well and like I said she had this this wall built up that she didn't want to, I mean, really get her heart broken in that competition by being eliminated or, or being kicked out or anything like that. Um, and she had the pain of the first time she had gone, I think on cycle three and tried to um, get on the show and it didn't work out. She got into a fight with somebody. And so she was coming from this tough background and these tough life experiences and trying to, um, get into this, this modeling industry. And that's hard, hard for anybody, honestly. Um, but she had this tough exterior built up. So when she was eliminated and she was like, Oh guys, I'm going to be okay. It's all right. It was, she was hurt. Um, and Which she I didn't see nothing wrong with her saying that. Yeah. And, and we didn't really either. Um, and so she just had that wall built up and wasn't going to break down because she got eliminated. And so when Tyra got her and Rebecca back up there, I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe they're gonna have a chance to save themselves or you know, something like that. And so when Tyra started going off, we're all like, uh, where did that come from? Like, oh my goodness. Um, because even going back and watching it, Tiffany's reaction wasn't, I mean, she, wasn't just going to be a sad blubbering mess. Um, and after the whole meltdown and Tyra screaming and all of that, Tiffany did get emotional because she, she didn't see a point in, in breaking down and crying and, and dropping that wall and letting part of her heart get broken. Um, but afterwards it was explained to us too, that Tyra had just started filming her TV show. And so she was filming Top Model, apparently, and she was working on her talk show as well. So it was explained to us that she was stressed and I was so busy and that that was just kind of the straw that kind of broke the camel's back that day. And, and that, I guess, was Tyra's situation. But um, and the one thing I, I didn't like is when Tyra said, you know, I'm talking to this, I'm talking to you like this because I love you. Um, I've come from bad relationships and someone that loves you doesn't yell at you like that. Um, so it just, yeah, it, that whole thing kind of didn't sit right with me. Um, Cause I know like I've been stressed, not like filming TV to TV shows and stuff like that stress. 
but I would never talk to someone that I loved like that. Not my kids, not my husband, not an acquaintance. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't yell at somebody like that. Um, there's a different way to get through to people than saying, I love you and I'm going to yell at you and, and, and be aggressive and tell you all this stuff. Um, so yeah, that just, it didn't sit right with me. Um, yeah. And then kind of, wow. it kind of ruined their goodbye too. And poor Rebecca, she didn't stand there in the poor middle Rebecca. of the Poor, poor Rebecca. Rebecca. <laughs> poor Rebecca. <laughs> Eliminations were not you know, her, her theory. She, yeah. <laughs> every time people talk about this moment, nobody ever poor mentions Rebecca. Rebecca. <laughs> she had to stand there literally like, like, oh my gosh, like her two parents are arguing at each other. And she's the poor kid that has to stand in the middle and be like, oh, please stop. Yeah. And then it kind of ruined the goodbye too. Because at that point, they just walked out of the room. We didn't get to really say, oh, my gosh, are you okay? Or We just didn't see him again. So, yeah, that wasn't cool. So I have, I have a lot of questions about this, um, mm -hmm. um, being the voice of the fans. But before I get to that, I will say, so I'm from Fort Lauderdale. Tiffany's from Miami. So mm -hmm. Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, Miami, Florida kind of share the same culture. And just seeing when I was little and watching it again in my adult life, seeing where Tiffany grew up and then yeah. seeing how Tiffany was on cycle three and her angle. Let me tell you something. Tiffany, I'm just, I'm going to speak about that, was a battle cat. I know those types of Miami girls. Yeah, she I was. Um, like I'm from. I know those Miami girls. Yeah. Tyra was very lucky that day. And it probably because it was security and it was cameras rolling and <laughs> Tiffany didn't want to embarrass herself. But if that yeah. would have happened in another setting, Tiffany would have vanquished Tyra Banks. Oh, yeah, Tyra wouldn't have stood a chance. She there's, there's there's no a chance. She would have no, I wouldn't want to fight Tiffany. No. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no way. No, it um, wouldn't have been a fight. No, no. It would have been a, just a pure beatdown. It would have been so bad. <laughs> it would have been great TV, though. <laughs> I'm just, and, and you know what? I, so I'll play devil's advocate and say maybe Tyra was very passionate about Tiffany not yeah. leaving and she really yeah. wanting Tiffany to do well because me watching, I felt like Tiffany um, threw, like, threw it away in the panel and Tiffany probably has her reasons on why she did and why she felt justified. But as yeah. a fan, I was disappointed that she that she just kind of like, you know, just kind of whatever, whatever. And she at least didn't try, at least try to have an attitude. Yeah. But that yeah. doesn't really justify in my book, someone yelling. I just know, I know those Miami girls like Tiffany. I know them, Michelle. <laughs> I know them. I went to school with them. I've seen them. I know them. Tyra would have been a, she would have been a stone on the floor. The way <laughs> Tiffany would have. No doubt. Stomped the yard no on Tyra's forehead. That five yep. head would have got reduced to three that day. She would have been left. <laughs> because Tiffany would have taken at least two inches off nice oh my gosh and th that challenge that we had to do in the panel too where we had to um to cold read that the board and they put all those words in there that that like quickly you're just like oh, oh what's that word try to say whatever so like if we had been given that before and i know it wasn't part of the challenge but if we had been given that beforehand and said hey read this a cold reading is so hard to do so hard to do um and so if we had been given that a little bit earlier, it wouldn't have been as bad. But reading that, it just made you feel stupid mm -hmm. because you see the word magenta and you're in a, a heated moment and you're trying to read it and the screen keeps scrolling up and up and you're just like, huh, huh, what's that word? And it just, ah, oh, yeah, it was, it was so stressful. And then afterwards you're like, I knew that word, mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. Any other situation, if I would have been able to read it and just practice before, beforehand, it would have been totally fine. But yeah, yeah, those situations are not designed for uh, <laughs> for people to uh, do their best. <laughs> so I want to ask you, there's a lot of conversation about what Tyra said and things that were edited out and whatnot. I know it's 17 <laughs> years ago, but is there anything that you remember from being there that you did not see in the final version in the episode so um there honestly every time you saw tyra speaking to us it was the only time she spoke to us when it was on camera and it was all part of the show um if the cameras were off there was no conversation uh, unfortunately um and so 
every time you saw Tyra speaking to us, that was it. That was the whole, <laughs> the, the whole kit and caboodle there. Um, one thing they did not show, um, and I was kind of surprised. And we're, talking about, and we're still talking about Tiffany, the, her, her heat of moment between Tiffany. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm heat of moment? Mm -hmm. mm, oh, I thought you were talking about other moment. Sorry. Um, no, honestly, oh, no, I'm going to ask you again, though, so just put a pin no, in That it. was pretty much it. It was pretty much it. What, what mm -hmm. you saw on camera between Tyra and Tiffany, that was it. That was all of it. Like I said, anytime Tyra was talking to us on camera, it was on the show. So, yeah. And it was unfortunate, too, because um, after that whole thing, um, we have to wait in the elimination room while whoever got eliminated packs up on the other side of the door. Um, and Tiffany, so I so badly wanted to go comfort her <laughs> and just be like, hey, are you, it's okay. It's, it's all right. Like, I love you. You know, it's okay. Um, but, yeah, no, it would, everything – that happened, you saw. And so while it's fresh in your brain, let's quickly segue <laughs> to what you were about to say that was said that we didn't see. Yeah. Um, there was one thing. So after we had to do the entertainment weekly um, interview challenge or whatever, and so Christina won that. And what they didn't show was the second part of her prize. So the second part was um, her and Brittany's mothers were flown out and actually spent the evening with us at the house and made dinner and stuff like that. So we got to meet um, Christina's mom and Brittany's mom. And that was completely cut out of everything. Um, Cause I remember some of the girls, you know, they're Brittany and Christina are like, Oh my gosh, come hang out with our moms and stuff like that. And we're all like, huh, we didn't win and you didn't pick us. Like, we don't want to hang out with your mom. And so I think we were all a little hurt because we're like, Oh, if we would have known that was up for grabs, maybe we would have tried a little bit harder. Um, because we were there for two months and um, never saw family members. So it would have been kind of cool. Um, and then one night we went out to, they took the younger girls out to a club and like danced or whatever. And Brittany and Christina and somebody else went out to dinner. And Brittany, uh, I drank a little bit, um, a lot bit. And um, Christina had to help her up the stairs and, and <laughs> put her in bed. And so we're all talking about our nights out and stuff like that. And all of a sudden we hear, good, boom. And we're like, what in the world? Brittany had went to roll out of her bed and the beds <laughs> were like twin size beds. They were small beds to, to her account. She rolled out of the bed, fell off and hit the floor and then knocked over the nightstand. And we had to help her back into bed. And she is, she's tall and long. And it was, it was a nightmare trying to get her yeah. back into that bed. It was ridiculous. But they never showed that. And I was shocked. I'm just like, that was amazing. Why was that not part of the show? Yeah. You know, Michelle, you, know, you know, Michelle, I'm a proud woman. <laughs> I'm a proud woman. But I remember being young. And I said, if I ever wanted to be a lesbian, it would be with that Britney. There was just something. <laughs> I love Britney. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm trying to see what, what am I saying about myself that I was just so attracted to her craziness and her loudness and that I... I She's fun. Yes. Yeah. And she still her like, I love watching her um, Snapchat stories because she has that same voice, the same personality. Like she has to be such a fun mom because she's just, <laughs> just in general, she's just a uh -huh. fun person. Um, and she'll be the person that's like, Hey, I'm bored. Let's go do this. And you're like, that's a crazy idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go do it. But yeah. She, she's a fun person. <laughs> Speaking about Britney, Holiday 197, I recall that the show depict, depicted Britney, Christina, and Kenya as having issues with you, Michelle, especially when you got to South Africa. The example they included is when Britney won the challenge at the top six and she took them to a spa. The three of them yelled goodbye to Naeem and Kaylin, but I recall them hesitating to yell it out to you. Was yeah, and they went, bye, Michelle. Were, uh huh, yeah. right. Yeah. Is it true that there were issues between you and them, or was the situation exaggerated through editing? So I think when I went and filmed Top Model, I was fresh out of high school. I had little to no confidence and um, didn't really know who I was as a person, honestly. Um, and then you have these other women in the competition that are, have been out there in the world a little bit and kind of have figured out who they are and they have these big personalities and, and they are confident in themselves and know 
know who they are. And I think that maybe those differences kind of caused some irritation um, and caused some, some, I guess, conf conflicting personality traits and stuff like that. And um, yeah, they, I don't, like I said, Kenya, I don't think has ever been a really big fan of mine. And then um, Brittany and Kenya kind of were buddy, buddy. Um, and um, yeah. And then too, when um, I don't think they showed this on the show either, when she won the challenge, um, or I think when we found out we were going to South Africa and they're like, you're going to have to, um, you know, you get to stay in the, the luxurious, you know, hotel and, oh, you three have to like camp on the safari. Everyone else is like, Ugh. and then I'm like, yes, camping on the safari. That's going to like, uh -huh. when else am I going to get to do that? And I think they all thought I was weird. They're like, uh, ew, like, why are you responding that way? It was amazing. Like I camped out on the safari in Africa and they had to keep the fire going to keep lines away. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever, but they did not. So girl, no. Now I've been with you <laughs> in this so whole chat. <laughs> but no. I went to Africa yeah. when I was 18 years old. I went to uh -huh. Uganda. Oh. And wow. I stayed, I think it was ginger. It was ginger where the where the orphanage was where we mm -hmm. were doing um service work i stayed there for two weeks oh wow miss michelle miss michelle <laughs> i loved everything about that country the environment yeah. the people the everything until the lights turned off <laughs> it, oh it's a whole new world when it's dark it whole is a whole i will never forget the i will never forget the horror in my brain, when I walked into like the little shower area, like oh, the little yeah. bathroom area early in the morning, because I wanted to get in before everybody else took a shower. Mm -hmm. Michelle, I remember <laughs> just walking in and on the wall, I felt like was every butterfly, caterpillar, anything that had wings, and dragons, terror. And they're not little, like here, they're like no! the size of your hands, like a dinner plate. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why they were freaking out when um, her when they all went to their little luxurious hotel. They kept the lights on when it was dark, and all the bugs went into their room. <laughs> yes, no, that's true. They tell you well. At least when when we, dang it, I need to upload that footage of when I went because I still have it. It's it's in my um my hard drive from many years ago. They told us specifically, turn off the lights. Or if you want to have a light, they get, it was like a little, it was like a special light because they said the bugs will attack you. And I mean, first of they all- They kept you, you all saw, the lights on. Yeah. You should have yeah. saw my face when I saw I had to sleep underneath the tent. I was like, <laughs> like I mean, not a tent, but like a, um, a net, a net. The mosquito like, net, oh what? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I remember there, there was this mammal or like this thing, they called it, I don't know if I'm, I don't know, a high rack, a high rack, a mm -hmm. high rack. But it would scream bloody murder at nighttime. Oh I remember one time gosh. a bat came through our cabin. <sighs> I oh. girl, no. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't got on a tangent. I just yeah. had to tell you, I don't know anything. Yeah. I, I just don't agree with you on that. I know. So one of the, the moments in, in Africa too that I, I did like freak out. Um, when we went on the safari and the lion wouldn't get out of the road. And so we had to back up and they were honking and trying and finally they just hit the gas. So when the lion went around the vehicle, it literally, I was in the last seat. It literally was probably three or four feet from me. And as soon, and I was in the very back. So as soon as the car went around the line, it immediately turned around and followed right behind the vehicle. Like it wasn't playing around. So we got through and I'm like, Oh like, and it had, they were, it was open completely on the, it, it, there was nothing I would have been able to do, nothing. Then the second, when we were doing the photo shoot with a crocodile, so we're walking up and they're like, okay, Michelle, don't worry. The crocodile is sedated. It's going to be okay. But if we yell run, just start running away from the water. And I went, what do you mean? They're like, oh yeah, there's hippos back there and hippos they kill people all the time here. And I'm like, what? A hippo kills more people in Africa than like anything else. Yeah. 
So they're like, yeah, if we, if we say run, don't ask why, don't ask what, just run away from the water. And of course, I'm closest to the water and there's a crocodile between my legs and I'm wearing heels like that. And all the production people are like 20 feet that way. So they already have a solid Thanks. start on me anyway. Like, like, come on. But yeah, they're just like, hey, it'll be fine. Just, just if we yell run, just do it. My favorite Thank you for that confident boost. <laughs> my favorite moment from that whole photo shoot is when Kaylin fell when she fell <laughs> on the on the crocodile. And she's like, ah. Kayla got her ass up out of this so fast. She, she was she, like, gone. What did Mr. J say? She ran away like the spring block. Kayla got up out of this. She, oh no. She did. She did. Because I mean, it was like, it wasn't an alligator. It was a legit crocodile. And they like, they had a thing around its mouth and stuff. And the, the handler was there. But still, like, uh, no. Like, I'll like pose near it. But like, when you like touch it and stuff, it's like, huh, no. You just expect it to come back at you and just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember on this same trip, we took a RV ride. I'll post this on my Insta story later, guys. We took a RV ride through on the Nile River. And Michelle, even just think about it right mm. now. I was in tears. Yeah, that would have been gorgeous. Mm. Gorgeous? Was it beautiful? It no. was pretty, but I was like, this is, this was it. This was in that Moses movie, and th these they don't care. They can, they will they will gobble me right now. That's will, right. I was thinking about the view, me. not being eaten by a crocodile. But you're right. Oh, that's all I can think of. <laughs> what about my arm that can't grow back? If and I'm just like, the but the view is beautiful. It was worth it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And when we were in South Africa, after I got a lip, so one thing I when I got eliminated. I got a three week like paid vacation in South Africa, which was amazing. Um, but I tried to convince Christina to go um, shark diving with me and she refused. She refused to go with me. Yeah. We were in Cape Town shark too. Diving. Yes, the most shark infested waters in the world. She wouldn't go with me. It's probably a good idea actually not to go. <laughs> I have a what are some of your favorite pastimes? Um, oh my gosh. Um, I, I, one of my favorite things I've ever done is uh, my daughters and husband and I went on a 35 mile round hike um, in the mountains of, of North Carolina. Um, uh, one of my favorite that I, I love running. I'm actually an ultra runner. Um, I I've ran 55 miles is my highest. I'm running a hundred miles in November at the, uh, the crooked road, 24 hour ultra. So yeah. Yeah, I ran a double marathon last year in Roanoke. I ran up six, ran up and down six mountains. Um, Roanoke. Yes, hilly. Right, you know where the star is in Roanoke, Virginia. I American ran... Horror Story. It, it does make me <laughs> yes! wonder enough. Yes. So yeah, I you like all this. I stuff. like crazy stuff. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, for my birthday next week here in Atlanta, they have this place yeah. called I Fly or Fly Zone. It's oh. a um, and you know what? Dang it! I'm so <laughs> mad. I, I just I just said it, but it's basically like a um, it's basically like the same thing that was in Cycle Seven of Top Model. The thing. indoor. Yeah, it's thing. it's yes. an indoor thingy. So I was yes. gonna post a video and you know and make and make the babies go crazy, but I'm not <laughs> jumping out of a plane. I I have done that. <laughs> oh no! In, I, in New Zealand, I went to New Zealand and I jumped. I skydived at um, fifteen thousand feet, and um, yeah, yeah, it was. It was amazing. It was such an adrenaline high. It was incredible. Yeah. Ah, you just would hear my <laughs> loud gay black ass. Oh, it screaming. was amazing. Ah! <laughs> no. From the ground, they'd be like, what is that noise? Girl, is it a meteor? <laughs> what is coming at us? Girl, what is, oh, it's Oliver. Girl, it's okay. It's just my, uh, ignore her. She okay. <laughs> um, but back, back to the question. Hurry up, because we've been waiting for you in this position for a long time. That's her screen name. Okay. How did you feel mm -hmm. about your elimination? She had one of the fiercest photos that we, the zebra one, uh, so fierce, I yep. agree. And her portfolio was one of the strongest amongst the girls. Do you feel like you had a bad edit? Um, so I think, and I've thought a lot about that. Um, I think the reason why I was eliminated was um, Kenya had a confidence that, that I just did not, um, I was not confident in 
and who I was. Um, I didn't feel beautiful. Um, and in the photo shoots and stuff, I always loved looking in the mirror because I'd be like, yeah, ooh, man, look at that. And I felt great, but um, on like a day-to-day -day basis, I, I didn't feel like I, I was worthy enough to be there because I would look around at all these other women and be like, oh my gosh, they're so confident and they're so beautiful and like, oh my gosh. Um, so I think one of the reasons why I did get eliminated is because just her, her confidence level was completely different, but um, she had her own set of problems and stuff going on. Um, I would have loved to have stayed um, and believe it. Like I've watched the season a couple of times. I have only watched the episode I got eliminated on once. And that is when it originally aired. It's still, you can't watch it. it still hurts a little. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. But um, yeah, but um. It was that whole show was a way to like come out of like my little shell that I had kind of built around me to protect me. And um, I kind of had to, uh, I was thrust out there into the world. And um, I honestly, I'm, I'm so confident now. My husband would, would never accuse me of lacking confidence ever. Cause sometimes I'll walk in the, the room and I'll be like, Hey, I just wanted to tell you, you, you are such a lucky person that like, you are married to know. me. Like, Hey, or sometimes I walk in and I'll be like, Hey, I just worked out. How do I, uh, how do I look? And, um, I, I'm Bob. extremely confident now and I love it. Cause my, my kids get to see that too. Um, Beautiful. and then I also get to say, Hey, look, I was a cry baby and I cried on like every episode and I wasn't confident, but confidence is something that you can practice and that you can you can achieve um so it's kind of a teaching thing now but yeah it's yeah it hurt it hurt and then kenya gained like 15 pounds like come on who does that jeez kenya come on not in a modeling competition jeez a little extra cushion is fine it's more to hang on to it's all good you can be healthy and have a little fluff but in a modeling competition, oh my gosh. Yeah. And I'm like, come on. Yeah. It hurt. It hurt. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to laugh. I wasn't you did. To laugh. <laughs> I wasn't supposed as soon to as laugh. I said it, you went, ooh. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to laugh. Listen, I don't have a, po you know what? I pick and choose yeah. when I, when I, when I want to have a poker face. But yeah. my comedic style is so dark. And you know, I haven't really, yeah. you know, because I'm afraid to be canceled. So there's a lot of things I want to show in my head. Yeah, I don't want to be canceled. <laughs> but like Bianca, people like Bianca Del Rio, Kathy Griffin. I love that type of comedy. Like that hard, like so inappropriate <laughs> comedy. I love it. But it's just, you know, I do this and I have to be fair and not buy. So I try not to laugh at y'all jokes. But the shit is funny. The shit is just funny. Okay. Everybody get over it. It's funny. Yeah. And, yeah. And like the thing is too, like she, she was beautiful no matter if she yeah, had 15 pounds on her or not. Yeah. And like, um, having a little bit of weight is no problem at all. I mean, you, I mean, I think being like super skinny, like, like if you have a little bit of muscle on you, a little bit of weight, I mean, that's perfectly healthy. It's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. So. Mm -hmm. so I want to ask you about your post-top model career, which I didn't know was that extensive until I started reading the comments and then I'm like Googling. I'm like, oh, oh, so, <laughs> oh. I've okay. done quite a bit. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, You've been around the world and I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And hopefully I'm about to um, sign with a, another model agency in, um, in Virginia. Um, so it's right. more um, commercial work, like, um, like what you'd see in a store or like hamburger helper ads or, you know, stuff kind of like that or like uh capital one commercials or something so it's gonna, not going to be the high fashion stuff but it's going to be the uh it's going to be fun and it's gonna it's gonna pay well so you know might as well get into it um yes. and um yeah and so that that'll be exciting to kind of step back into the modeling world but um Congrats. actually right after yeah thank you and cool. um right after top model i actually um, we weren't supposed to move anywhere until after the show aired and stuff like that. So after the show aired, um, I actually moved to Los Angeles and I lived there for a couple years um, and did uh, some stuff with WWE during that time because they had like top model week and stuff like that. Um, and then worked a lot um, modeling, got into 
a little bit of acting, mostly extra work and, you know, hey, go stand in the background stuff. But um, it was still a lot of fun. Um, and then I ended up um, going to Virginia to hang out for the summer. And here I am uh, 14 years later. So, uh, <laughs> but um, then from here, I've actually still done a lot of stuff. Um, I was w on WWE Tough Enough. And um, that was, yeah, that was, that show was a lot of fun, but it came at like a period in time where I needed a good shove. Um, mm -hmm. And it was funny because Top Model came at a time where I needed a good shove out the door into the world. And um, after um, W, or when I was on WWE Tough Enough, um, I missed my kid. Um, mm -hmm. She was, you know, uh, I think she was three. She just turned three at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I just missed her. It wasn't the same talking on the phone with her. Um, it was, it was my baby and I wanted yeah. to hold her and be there with her. And, um, I think in that moment too, I realized I'm like, this is, this is not what I want. I don't want to be traveling all over the place, not being able to be with my child. And, um, I was so happy. Stone Cold Steve Austin was the host of that show. I'm so happy he understood oh, because perfect. he, I, yeah, because I pretty much, I was like, Hey, here's my belt. I'm quitting. I'm going home to be with my kid. I, I make, I'm choosing my kid over this. And he's like, dude, I respect that. And I'm like, whoo, I'm so happy you feel that way because I thought you were going to scream at me for quitting. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. And that she just turned 13, um, on the 16th. So happy birthday. Yeah. Right. My kids are crazy, but yeah. Yeah. There was something else you did. Um, a lot of questions oh God. people wanted to know about. Oh no, I'm not going to spring them on you just yet. Sit tight, <laughs> sit tight, sit tight. Uh, but what people wanted it? to know about you working with Janice Dickinson in her modeling agency. Oh my gosh, Janice, she's crazy. So I, when I heard she was doing that show, I lived in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and I went and I like auditioned for it and all that stuff, and it was it was crazy. Um, and when the cameras were on, even when the cameras were off, she is such a big personality and the stuff she would say. And it was just like, did that really just come out of her mouth? Like, Oh my gosh. Um, but it's in the beginning. Um, I don't know if the whole season was like this or the ones after it, but in the beginning, it's like, Hey, show up at 8am. We're going to film and do all this stuff. So we would go and like, just be in this like room together and they'd be like, okay, we're having a casting person come in and, and we're going to do this audition and this audition. And it was a lot of just sit around and wait. Um, and so I did it a couple times and then eventually I'm like, this is not for me. I like, I'm going to go out and find my own work and, and I feel like I could do it at a, a better pace than what is happening here and ended up just kind of walking away from the whole thing. Um, and then too, I didn't, I didn't know how serious it was. Um, cause Janet, Janice is such this, you know, big personality and she says all this stuff and you don't know whether half of it's true or not. So well, in that regard, I'm just like, I, it'd be better for me to just step away from this whole thing. So it was, yeah, it was yeah. a dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the last thing, Michelle. <laughs> Which I didn't find out until today. What? I didn't find this out till today. I know, what? That what did you, I do? That you, no, you didn't do anything bad. <laughs> you didn't do anything. You were living your life, girl. But I didn't oh, know God. that you and Johnny Fairplay knew each other. Young and dumb. Young and dumb. Young and dumb. <laughs> yeah, so I met him when we lived in LA. And he's one of the reasons why I came to Virginia and um, ended up having a kid and thinking that that whole relationship was so bad, so bad, and um, was actually going to end it many times. And then eventually got pregnant and said, oh, I'm going to try to make this work. You know, after the baby, it'll get better. Makes sense. After we get married, it'll get better. Well, after our first year anniversary, it'll get better. And then eventually I just, I had to walk away. Um, it, I was honestly just losing who I was as a person. Um, and so I chose to walk away. And the second I pulled out of that driveway, I'm like, oh, 
I am never going back there again. And it was, I didn't expect the relief. And that's where I'm like, oh, I'm doing the right thing. This is, I'm not supposed to be in that place. And um, because of that, I have actually gained a lot of confidence too. Um, being out on my own, doing my own thing, being a single mother for a while, and then, you know, finding my new boo, the one I'm supposed to be with. The but, doctor. Um, yes. Um, but yeah, it's been a very long, complicated um, road, but um, all of it has led to who I am today. And um, I, I mean, it's, I love who I am. I love my life and I love my family and yeah, I have to deal with him every once in a while, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Life is good. He's still misbehaving, is he? And no okay. comment. No, no comment. comment. But listen, mm. I want to take this time because something told me you were going to you were going to say something to that effect, which is why yeah. I ask. Um, not to be messy, <laughs> but to get that part out. And I just want to say to everyone who's watching, it's over two hundred people watching us right now, and there will hey, be a lot hey. of people. Um, watching this when you get on YouTube, if it's a guy, if it's a girl, if it's a job, if it's a situation, if it's a place, if it's something that is not adding to your life, that doesn't make you happy, that does not make you feel comfortable, that does not fulfill you, that makes you sad, that makes you feel small, that makes you feel quiet, do what Michelle did. Mm -hmm. And this is when I tell the children to cover your ears in five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Get your shit and fucking leave. Yes, yes, yes. And honestly, in in that relationship, um, I didn't realize it until very long after it. I was reading some like Facebook comment and I'm like, oh my gosh, I I was mentally and emotionally abused in that relationship. And I had no idea until probably two years after I was divorced. And I read that and I'm like, wait a minute, like Oh my, oh my gosh, it was me. Um, and believe it or not, I was on the Dr. Phil show too. He tried to help us and it didn't work. So we, um, we went on there and we were talking about our marriage and, and the best advice that he gave me, he said, if you have to give up who you are to make a relationship work, the cost is too high. And too when hard. he said that, I'm like, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, if you would have in that relationship, if you would have said, Hey, Michelle, what's your favorite color? And I would say, oh, I like the color red. It would have felt like a lie coming out of my mouth because it was, it was how I felt about something, even simple as my favorite color, because I didn't have confidence in, in my beliefs and, and what I was saying and, and who I was as a person still. Um, and I knew that I was there deep down inside, but I was being pushed down. And um, getting out of that relationship was honestly, one of the best things that I have ever done. Um, and like I said, I didn't realize how bad it was until looking back and, and even talking with, with my husband too. I'm like, like, he'll hear about a situation and he's like, are you, are you serious? Like, why, why would someone treat anyone like that? And I'm thinking, and I'm like, I wouldn't treat a dog like that. Like, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, sometimes it, and then I've heard too, it, it, sometimes the, the change hurts more than staying in the relationship. It's, it's change is terrifying. Um, and so I think a balance has to tip sometimes that it has to hurt more to be in the relationship than to leave it. Um, and unfortunately I got to that point and, um, and just walked out, um, and considering he has an ex-wife and ex-fiance and, two baby mamas, you know, just saying I'm, I wasn't really the problem. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to decide what inappropriate thing I wanted to say next. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Some people never change. Just, yeah. <laughs> all I gotta say is leave, just leave guys. Run. I remember, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna go into great detail about it, but I remember when I first moved here to Atlanta and it was my first time um, really being on my own. I was in a new city. I was here going to college and I was dating this older gentleman who, um, and you know, I was being taken care of, but it was the worst situation mm. I ever could have been in. And I don't think I've even told this story before, but I remember on the night 
well, I can't remember the night, but I just remember it got so bad. And I was staying with him. I was staying with him. I got all my shit. <laughs> Michelle, I got all my shit. I didn't know where I was going. Mm -hmm. I did not know. I did not know where I was going. It didn't matter. No, I didn't know. Out. I didn't mm. know. It had to be 2 a.m. in the morning. I did not yeah. know where I was going. Um, I think school was closed. I, I went graduated from Morehouse College in Atlanta. I just told, I called the car. Lyft, at the time, Lyft and Uber wouldn't even go to where he lived. And it was like a hundred dollars. <laughs> and I was a poor college student taking care of myself. I spent my last dime getting out Ooh. of that house. And it was the best decision I yep. ever could have made getting mm -hmm. out of that situation so what i'm saying what michelle is saying and this is why i love doing these chats because of course we get to the mess we get to the tea we get to talk about all these things but i want you guys to walk away with teachable moments and then this is the first time we're talking about this ever i think in a chat i've done if there's something that we just spoke about that you're dealing with get up and go mm -hmm. look how beautiful michelle looks right now <laughs> look at that sexy husky doctor <laughs> who walked in who loves her and cherishes her i went on your page beautiful children beautiful life you're rating your like look at it look <laughs> at it guys look at her she is glowing she is beautiful get your shit and leave okay i'm done <laughs> and i think too like especially like on top model you saw it i i did not know who i was um, and I didn't know what I deserved in life. And when I went out into the world and did top model, um, I didn't know who I was and I didn't know what I stood for. And I think that caused me to fall for a lot of, of, a lot of wrong things out there in the world. Um, and I think the thing is too, that, um, we always, we accept the love that we think we deserve, not the love we actually deserve. And, I know after my divorce and all that, I kind of had to sit down and think of what like the ideal relationship that I would want. And I listed all these things about how I wanted to be treated, how I wanted someone to, you know, to react to, you know, to my opinions and, and my offerings of advice and um, just how I wanted someone to talk to me and treat me. And um, then I realized I'm like, okay, that's, what I need to find then um, because it may be this long list of, of stuff but when it comes down to it you should go for what you actually deserve because if you go for any less the person's not going to know your value and if someone thinks you're you know a trinket from the dollar tree they can't treat you like the diamond that you truly are they're just going to think you're some you know they don't know your value so they can't treat you like you're supposed to be treated so some people just can't see your value and they don't need you. Don't so need to. Exactly. Don't freaking need to. You know, <laughs> I'll add, you know, I'm, the reason why I teared up is I think in my life, that was the first time I stood up to somebody. Yeah, it's a good feeling, isn't it? Like and that I ain't moment. stopped standing up to a motherfucking set. Right? <laughs> I know, because that moment, I remember very distinctly that moment when I left that house and I just had the thought, you were never going back there again. And the bliss and the joy and the happiness, like in, in, in our state, you have to do like counseling and it's, you have to do all this stuff before you divorce. So we had to go sit in this room and they taught you about mediation and what it was. And there were like six other couples. I was the only one smiling, the only one having a good time. And like the lady was trying to lighten it up and was like, tell a joke. And I'd be like, ha ha. Nobody, everyone else in the room is like, he's going to forget the kid's birthday. Should I write it down for him? And I'm like, bitch, please. Like, you need to <laughs> calm down. Like, just sign the papers. Get out of there. Uh -huh. But I'm, I was so happy. I'm like, I'm getting divorced. Woo! But it was such, it was just, I was free. I was free. And I, I was, yeah, I was going to go out there and find my soulmate and uh, move on. You did. So, you did. I did, honestly. Um, and it's funny because Bobby, I've told him too, like, honestly, um, I'm so happy that I found him because 
he, we have been through a long, rough road and it has not been easy, but it's so been worth it. Um, honestly, like if anything ever happened to him, like I'm, I'm over it. I'm done. He's, he's the one for me. Like, honestly, if he, if he was gone from my life, I would not move on. He's, he's the one, he's the only, yeah. So that's, yeah. He's my guy. I'm so happy <laughs> for you. I'm so happy. So, oh my goodness. I did not know this was the talk I needed today. This was great. There you go. <laughs> this was freaking great. Listen, guys, I love you guys that are watching. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Hey, hey Tyra, leave it alone. <laughs> now, Tyra, we having a great shoot, talk. Shoot, leave the Tyra. Wi-Fi alone now before I come over there. <laughs> before I come over there and pee in your grass. <laughs> But I want to know, when was the last time you saw Tyra? And what are, what are your opinions on Tyra Banks? Hmm. So. Um, Wipe those eyes, girls, and pull back the, those teacups. <laughs> all right. We got this, ladies. So, um, last ah! time I actually saw Tyra was at, um, I think it was cycle five, maybe, with um, Kim and um um oh gosh and no, it, was it was a bunch cycle... of... is it cycle six seven seven yeah it was kim and sarah and they kissed in the limo that mm. cycle yeah oh, no, that's because cycle five. cycle five yeah so uh the last but time i saw back. her you came back another cycle for a photo i shoot. did i came back as a guest yeah um but the cycle with Kim and Sarah, the kids in the van, I knew Sarah before Top Model. And so I went to her, um, we were with the same agency when I went on Top Model. So I, I knew her beforehand. So I got invited to the season finale party thing in Los Angeles to, you know, the final season and they walked the red carpet and all stuff. So I saw Tyra there and that was the last time I ever saw her. Um, so Tyra, so I could not watch her talk show because every time she talks to people, I know she wants to help. She has, you know, done a lot of good things out there, but somehow it always comes back to her and it drives me crazy because um, she's like, oh my gosh, oh, you had, you know, problems when you were younger. Your parents like starved you in the basement. Well, when I modeled in Paris when I was 16, I only had Snickers for like a week and I didn't eat a whole lot because I was trying to fit into the modeling industry. And I'm like, woman, those two don't go together. They don't go together. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. And every time she would do that, I'd be like, no, Tyra, no. Stop. It drove me insane. I couldn't watch her show. Like, honestly, if you go back and watch, you'll see those moments. I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm trying to reach for my weave, my weave. Rebecca, give me some, girl. Give me some of that. Give me some of that tip <laughs> weave, girl. I'm but to it drove me insane. Back. I don't know if she meant to do that or what, but it's it's something I noticed, and I just can't handle it. So I could never watch her show, like ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the question I like to ask everybody when I do this, if you were standing before Tyra Banks in 2021, what would you say to her? Oh, I honestly, I, ooh, I don't know. When last on the show, honestly, and I don't know whether it was stress because she was filming multiple things at the same time or all of that, but it seemed that, she didn't really talk to us unless the cameras were on. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe I, maybe I'd, I'd thank her for the whole top model venture. Cause it kind of brought me uh, to a point in my life where I ventured out into the world. Um, Amazing. And I, it kind of changed me as a person and kind of forced me to kind of look at who I was mm -hmm. and, um, and where I wanted to go in life. Um, cause I, if I hadn't gotten that phone call from top model, um, I don't know what I would have done. Cause literally I was trying to figure it out. I didn't know I had graduated high school. I didn't apply to any colleges. I didn't really think 
that far ahead. I had zero plan. And so that kind of gave me a direction and gave me um, kind of my path into the world. Um, and it's been bumpy and it's been rocky, but it has been one hell of a ride too. <laughs> like it, I've lived a crazy, blessed, um, dumpster fire, rainbow kind of life. And um, it's, it's been incredible. And I feel like Top Model yeah. kind of got me out there and was like, hey, here you go. Here's your opportunity to, to go out in the world and, and figure out who you are. So um, I definitely thank her for the opportunity, but I don't know how well she'd listen. <laughs> And with that, Michelle, I don't have any more questions for you. Listen, guys, yeah. I have about maybe five more minutes before I have to go jump in makeup because I have to do another live tonight at nine. So I know we're going to, um, we normally do like a, a, a live Q&A and I still want to do it. So everyone who got okay. a badge, just eight of you guys, please don't want to get no more badges. Just eight of you guys because I want to get the eight <laughs> questions through before I let Michelle go and I have to I'll try to keep the answer, answer short. Get no, through all Michelle, of them. this is this. <laughs> I did not, and I mean, I never really walk it. I mean, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Sometimes, you know, just based off what you see on TV and stuff like that, you know, I may have like a little, a little, you know, expectation or something like that, but I did not know this was going to be as beautiful as it was. And I want to thank Yay. you personally for doing this with me, talking so eloquently about all the things about top models, sharing things about your life and your journey. And it's, it's, oh, this was amazing. I'm definitely <laughs> going to be rewatching this again and again and again. Yay, I'm so happy it went well because I wanted it to. I even told like my coworkers, I'm like, oh, I hope this goes really well. And it's like a good interview. And mm -hmm. I've watched some of the other ones and they've been pretty good. So like, I want to do my best, represent. <laughs> oh, girl, you did, you did a smashing job. <laughs> and my Nigel Barker verse smashed it. Right. Okay, so Sirabat wants to know, how do you like Virginia? She grew up in Blacksburg and loves <laughs> Oh my gosh. Up. My daughter is a student at Tech, our, our oldest. And um, I honestly, I love Virginia. Um, I, I love to travel. Um, so I actually went to New York a couple weeks ago and spent with my sister. And um, I think it's great to come back to um, a, a small town um, and Honestly, I love to hike. Uh, I love to run. I love going to the mountains. Um, and it's, I'm a very nature type person, mm -hmm. love going camping, all that stuff. Um, so it's, it's beautiful here. I love it. Um, I can drive home if I want to, to Indiana, I can go to the beach. I can, um, it's just, it's a great place. I love great it. Place. Beautiful. Voltaire <laughs> don't care wants to know where you actually do all stars. I was not. Um, I don't know if it was because I maybe, I didn't do enough stuff after Top Model or if um, they had a list of people and I just kind of didn't make it on the list. But I don't know. It'd be kind of fun to go back and do something, though. I would love to see you now go back on Top Model. That would oh, my gosh. It would be like night and day. Mm -hmm. It would be incredible. I, I would do much better this go around. Yes. <laughs> Virtual underscore Andy wants to know, love seeing you all grown up. Did you have a girl crush on any of your castmates? Oh, no, um, I think I was, <laughs> honestly, I think I was so stressed out that I couldn't even like process something like that. But if, if I had, um, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't think any of them there really would have been my type. Oh. So yeah, I don't think so. Mm. Well, sorry. Mm, not so sorry. <laughs> uh, Angsty underscore media wants to know, would Michelle do Survivor? <laughs> I almost gagged honestly I would love to do the show alone and it's pretty much like Survivor except without the challenges they literally just drop you off and you survive um honestly I, I would my husband and I want to do Amazing Race um we think mm -hmm. we would we work so well together um mm -hmm. I think that would be and we love traveling so um uh, yeah we would love to do Amazing Race and, and then play. someone else wanted you to talk about WWE, which she did talk about, guys. Um, so when I post this mm -hmm. on YouTube, go back and rewatch because she did a whole um, spill on her time on WWE. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking. Listen, Michelle, again, I will repeat, this has been freaking amazing. <laughs> you did a... You, you did a great job. 
You did a great job. A great job. I was going to say something so shady, and since I said I was going to say <laughs> something shady, I'm going to say you've done a you've done a better job than some. Oh God. Hey. Well, I, the thing is too, like I when I do something, I want to I want to put my best foot forward. My, I want my yeses to mean yes, and my noes to mean no. So when I saw it, it was funny because um, some people, some top model fans and stuff kept asking me probably three or four times, hey, are you going to interview with him? Hey, do you want me to ask him? Hey, like reach out to him. And so I started watching and I'm like, yes. I didn't realize like the top model community was like still so like amazing. Um, and it's, it's funny because I walked into a restaurant here not too long ago and all the girls ran up to me and they're like 16, 15, 16, 17. Like they're my, my kids ages. And, um, so they walked up and they're like, oh my gosh, we watched you on Hulu. And I went, no, <laughs> it's on Hulu. And then my heart stopped one day when I got on Netflix and I saw Tyra's face and it said top model. And I'm like, <gasps> and I looked and I'm like, oh, season 19, season 20. Okay. But I'm like, oh my like, gosh, it's still a thing. It's still a thing. Amazing. Yeah. It feels like it was such a lifetime ago, but um, it's kind of cool though, you know? <laughs> Well, Michelle, I'm not going to hold you because someone's about to reach behind this camera and snatch me off this thing. <laughs> but listen, this is definitely in the top lives. My personal face. Yay! Thank you so much. No, it really was. It really was. I really enjoyed it. And I know everyone watching enjoyed it just by looking at the comments. And I know everyone that will watch on YouTube um, will enjoy it. Is there anything that you want to plug or say or announce or oh my gosh. I don't really have anything to plug you know if anyone wants you know to come run races with me you can do that <laughs> you know <laughs> the one piece of advice it's funny because there was like Michelle give a piece of really good advice to you know to to sign off and I'm like okay don't wear a macaroni necklace in a hot tub and it <laughs> And it always makes them really mad because they're like, that's not good advice. And I'm like, I'm sorry. That's all I have. So <laughs> I'm a weirdo. <laughs> it's okay. On um, You know what? Yeah, I don't really have anything to plug, honestly. Just... <laughs> sorry. Where did that come from, Michelle? I don't know. <laughs> honestly, like I tell my kids, because my, <laughs> my kids are like, mom, you are so weird. And I'm like, listen, if you think somebody's normal, you don't know them well enough. That is everybody, true. everybody is weird in their own way. So if you go, ew, I'm weird. Congratulations, you figured out you. Like, <laughs> you're weird. Own it and go with it. Like yeah. be your weirdo, like a lovable, adorable self. So yes. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't want to say bye. Listen. We I should do it again. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I have something in the works, so maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. Well, not may, uh, let me not say maybe because it's gonna happen. So yes, we will. <laughs> we will. Just we will. let me know. Let me. I know. will. Listen, <laughs> I'm sending love kisses. We're all sending love and kisses to you and the girls, the dog, <laughs> Doctor Bobby, mm -hmm. and especially you from giving us an Thank amazing A and T M to exclusive live on Soccer Four. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs> I didn't want to say bye, guys. That was so great. Okay, listen. I am Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cuting reporting for... Why am I chest... My man dude just sitting here so supple like this. I got my old man to go attend to right fast before I go get this feast. This, I can't even talk just thinking about... Mm, all right, y'all. So my name was Oliver Twix. <laughs> My name is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cuter reporting for duty. And we have done the Lord's work once again. Listen, this video will be posted on the Oliver Twix. That's T-W-I-X-T YouTube channel where you can watch this video and so many others. Listen, I freaking love you guys. You guys are freaking amazing. There's another chat tomorrow. So please be sure that you're following. Hit that notification bell so you can know what I'm doing stuff. You can know what's going on, when it's going on, when it's happening. And, um... Thank you guys so much for your love and support. Thank you to everybody who participated in the badge live Q&A. You guys are amazing. Thank you to everybody who sent me gifts for my birthday next week, next week, Wednesday. Like, thank y'all. Like, thank y'all a lot. I can't wait to show everybody what you guys got me because I don't even know what I got. And um, as you guys know, as I love to say...
be sure to what? Pray and Kegel. So you can get you a man like Michelle, the doctor. Y'all saw that doctor. Trust me, I know Michelle Kegels. Trust me, I know Michelle Kegels. I know what she does. <sighs> Bye, guys. <laughs>